Today, we're looking at the sweet 433 MHz door window sensor. Inside the package, this is all you get. You get the sensor itself, the magnet, the screws, some double side tape. The quarter is just for scale. This thing is huge. If you compare this to the Aquara door sensor, then this is almost three times the size. It uses this funky 12 volt battery. That's right, 12 volt battery. I didn't know such a thing existed. Here's the sensor on the side, the magnet also on the side, the way battery for scale. Yeah, this thing is huge. The unit does not come with any battery, so don't forget to buy this funky 12 volt battery. As soon as you slide the door down, you can insert the battery and then close it back up. As soon as battery is inserted, it's ready to go. You're probably curious, why the heck am I using this 433 MHz sensor? It's not even mesh protocol. This thing is like ancient from the 80s, isn't it? And yes, it is very old, but oldies but goodies. And the reason they're still making it is that because it's dirt cheap, reliable, and the battery life seems to last forever. Let's go back a little bit. Recently, I bought a new car and I live in a bad neighborhood. This car, a Hyundai, is supposedly very easy to break in. That's why we're installing this on my new car. As soon as any doors are open, I'll get an instant notification. The lights in the garage will turn on, and if needed, the siren will go off. We're looking at the Hyundai Ionic 5 right now. If you open the driver's side, you'll see this huge cavity. You can fit a lot of things in it, surprisingly. Obviously, it's not accessible when the door is closed. So it's the perfect place to install this sensor. If you're going to be installing this on the Ionic 5, this is the exact location that you can use. If you ever need to replace the batteries, all you have to do is hold onto this cover and then slide it up to replace the battery. On the door, this will be the position to place the magnet. You can use any magnets you want. Now to verify that the sensors are working, all you have to do is close the door and open the door. If things are working properly, then you should see a red light right here. Every time the door closes, the red light turns on, and when it opens, the light also turns on. On the other side, the passenger, this is the position. And on the passenger door, this is it. To get the sensor into home assistance, this is the bridge that I'm using. Basically, it converts 433 MHz signal into Wi-Fi. And from Wi-Fi, home assistant will be able to talk to it. Getting this thing to work with home assistant is not included in this video tutorial. I'm going to have a link down in the description below because I feel some other people are doing a better job than I can. So assuming that you got the bridge working with Home Assistant, go ahead and log in and click on Console. Every time the door closes or open, it will send a signal. When you're looking at the console, this is what you care. Data and then some hex code. Go ahead and open up your Home Assistant configuration file up. In your configuration file, make a MQTT section. Whenever the door is open, it will be labeled as on. And when the door is closed, it will be labeled as off. So go ahead and open and close the door to get the data from the console. All right, hopefully this video helps you on how to secure your cars or your doors. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.